Hello guys and welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new here. Now it's probably hard for many of you who are not new here to believe that I have had my 120 gallon reef aquarium running for basically four and a half years. Now I just did the math, I got this tank four years and six months ago today. So I thought I would go ahead and take you on an updated look through the tank, um, livestock, how the coral has grown in, all the equipment I'm still using. I get a lot of questions about what lighting schedule I use, um, what flow schedule I use for my wave pumps. So I thought I would go ahead and compile all that into one video and show you guys all the equipment I'm still running, some new equipment, and then of course how the livestock is doing. Now I actually made an Amazon storefront list of all of the equipment and the things I really recommend for saltwater aquariums just in one easy list. That link will be in the description, so if you have any questions about the lights, the flow pumps, the sand I use, the rocks, literally anything, maintenance equipment, it will all be right there in that list easy for you to find. So we're just gonna start at the top of the tank and work all the way down through the sump. So starting at the top are my max spec aquarium lights. I get a lot of questions about these lights, if I still use them, how I like them, and even what schedule I run them at. So I have three of them over this tank. And I've been using these lights ever since I got them. I had the current USA lights before. I like these a lot better. They have a cooling fan. I just have to make sure to keep them dusted off. And they have performed perfectly. As I mentioned, I really, really have been enjoying them. I actually went ahead and took a screenshot or a screen recording, I should say, of the app because these are Wi-Fi controlled lights, which is so convenient. And so right here, I'm gonna go ahead and put up that video so you guys can see exactly what lighting schedule I'm running. I get a lot of questions about exactly when my lights turn on and what intensity of each color spectrum I'm running them at. So feel free to pause this at any point and you can see exactly what I'm running. Um, it is a 24 hour timer and there is a slight little sunrise and sunset moment going on in there. Um, but overall performance has been great. I've had no issues with them, none of the LEDs have burnt out or anything, and the corals, as you can see, have responded amazing to them. Next up, I'm still running the screen lid that I've always ran on this tank. If it's a DIY lid, in the Amazon uh, storefront, I have linked the mesh that I used, but you basically get a screen door kit and you can DIY an aquarium lid super easy. So I'm still running that, I've had no issues with it. I am still running the same overflow drain to my sump as well as the same output. Um, we'll get into the sump very shortly, but as you can see, surrounded by a mass of waving hand coral and so many bubble tip anemones, like the bubble tip anemones in this tank have completely taken off, like I've never seen them before they are growing like crazy they're multiplying quite literally I take them into my fish store all the time my fish store can't take any more they're like full I don't know what I'm gonna do with all these anemones <laughs> but in between those anemones is my max spec jump 2k gyre wave pump this is the only wave pump I use in my aquarium it's the only extra form of circulation and I have it on an alternating gyre so it runs for about 10 seconds um, pushing water forward so I'm circulating it like this um, and then it reverses randomly um, and does the same thing backwards. So it is random, it's kind of on an automated program where it kind of does its thing like I mentioned, um, but I believe I have it maxing out at 70% forward and 60% reverse. I find it keeps all the corals lifted up off the ground, it keeps everyone flowing and pulsating happy, and as you can see, the anemones sure do like it. Now the majority of this 120 gallon tank's livestock for corals is made up of those anemones. I started with, I think it was literally one tiny anemone probably five years ago, and it's turned into this, which is insane. So many anemones and also so many other soft corals. We have a ton of green star polyp, as you can see, it's starting to climb up the back of the wall. We have waving hand coral also all over the wall, as well as some Kenya trees and just a couple other various soft corals. There is also a hammer coral back there and then a ton of um, Recordia mushrooms. Now, I really love the ease and simplicity of these soft corals. As you can see, the tank has grown in and is very mature at this point, and I don't have to dose anything other than my standard water changes, which by the way, for water changes, I use the Fritz RPM salt mix. Um, I just do water changes every couple weeks and the tank kind of runs itself at this point. Like I mentioned, no dosing or anything crazy, which I love and that's one of the reasons I love soft corals. So they really just have been thriving and taking over in here. We did lose some of the LPS corals and more difficult to keep corals probably because they genuinely just got out competed by the soft corals and that's just how this works sometimes. I have to keep the tank pretty manicured when it comes to those waving hand corals and the anemones because they are taking over but I guess that's kind of just the look we're going for. There's also some invertebrae in here. There's a fire shrimp and a cleaner shrimp as well as some assorted snails. Uh, they're an amazing part of the cleanup crew and they're really fun to watch as well. Moving on to the fish, I pretty much have all the same fish. There's two pajama cardinals, a single damsel, 
Um, my black Ocellaris clownfish, my standard Ocellaris clownfish. Um, there's a Royal Grama as well. I really try to keep a pretty nice community tank with a good balance of color and personality. Some of the bigger fish include my Naso Tang, which is one of my favorite fish. He's so cool, so personable. Uh, same thing with the Sailfin Tang. I've had that guy for, I believe, about six years now, as well as the Blue Tang, who has also put on a considerable amount of size, and the Fox Face Rabbit Fish. There's also a little Purple Fire Fish going around there sometimes, as well as the Six Line Wrasse. Um, I really like the smaller fish because they're able to zigzag and kind of interact with the rock work, including this Melanurus wrasse as well. There's a lot of fish in here actually now that I take a better look. Um, but the big fish are always out in the front ready to eat some seaweed and the smaller ones kind of hang back and zigzag throughout the rocks. Speaking of the rocks, I have a mix of just standard reef rock that I got from a tank a couple years back, as well as uh, the life rock arches from Carib Sea. I really have enjoyed the life rock arches. Although it really doesn't matter anymore because you can't see them because there's so much coral, it's completely grown over. I am still using the Carib Sea Hawaiian black sand in the bottom. I really have enjoyed this sand. I like the black contrast. I'm not a huge fan of white sand in reef aquariums. I've had no issues with it. As I mentioned, we're four and a half years in. I had this sand in all my previous saltwater tanks as well. It's just my personal go-to and I really, really enjoy it. But now we can get into the real workings of this aquarium in my sump. So under the tank itself is a 40 gallon breeder aquarium which is the sump to this tank. So the water starts by draining through the overflow you saw earlier and hits a seven inch filter sock. I have a couple of these in 200 microns and 100 microns. I replace them about once a week, throw them in the washing machine when they're dirty and just cycle through those. I love a good filter sock. I've had no issues with that. And the rest of the sump is just a ton of reef rock. This provides a whole bunch of good places for the beneficial bacteria that thrive in a saltwater aquarium to live. Could be a safe haven for some copepods down there. You never really know what's going down there. But besides a ton of that rock also in my sump I have two heaters I have a Higer 300 watt heater I believe which has its own little controller which I really love and I also have my Eheim heater now I did have two Eheim heaters but they just started failing and as far as I know I don't even think Eheim makes products for the US market anymore Eheim heaters were kind of my go-to for a while but they've recently just started disappointing me they leak and I'm just not a fan anymore. So I have moved to the Higer heater with the built-in controller. I've had no issues with it since. It keeps the tank steady. And honestly, it's set it and forget it. I really, really like it. Next up is gonna be my protein skimmer. This is the MaxSpec Jump protein skimmer. It's all in the same bundle with the MaxSpec lights and the MaxSpec wave pump. And once again, it's one of those equipment that just keeps on kicking it. I run it at about 80%. I have it dialed in to produce really dark skim mate. I haven't had too many issues with it. It's actually probably due for some maintenance soon. I really like how it has two intakes I think that it just creates you know twice as many bubbles you know why have one when you could have two I don't know the science behind it um, but it's been a bulletproof unit for me it has a little float valve that in case something does go haywire and the skimmer cup does fill up it doesn't overflow it actually cuts the pump off which has happened to me a few times uh, so I've really enjoyed that just because no one wants that dirty skimmer water all back throughout their sump the next chamber in my sump is just a little bubble chamber uh, this just helps trap any bubbles from the protein skimmer. There's a little piece of filter floss in there, some bio balls, just some other miscellaneous um, filtering media. There's also a whole bunch of overflow anemones. Literally, some of my anemones get sucked down the overflow, and when I find them in the filter stock, I just throw them into that chamber. There's a small little refugium light up there, which is just a cheap refugium light from Amazon. It's nothing special. Um, that... I think keeps some Kato alive down there. I don't really look in this sump too often. Like I said, this tank is kind of set it and forget it. In the last chamber, I have my Toonzy or Toons, whatever, a uh, Nano auto top off. This thing, knock on wood, like literally, has been so reliable. I've never had any issues with it. I I got it once like five years ago and it's just done what it needs to do. Right to the right of my sump I have a big seven gallon trash can that serves as my auto top off reservoir. I have the little auto top off pump in there, a simple float valve, it does what it needs to do. I could not recommend this aquarium auto top off system enough. It's just been bulletproof and an auto top off is something that can quite literally crash a tank. So using this Toons one has just been stress free and not sponsored by them, but I really, really like it. Also, last but not least, down in the sump is the current USA return pump. This also has been running really, really well for me. I actually do have a max spec return pump on backup, 
but I really like how this one connects to my phone via the little Bluetooth connector. Um, it means whenever I'm cleaning the tank or feeding, I can just use the app on my phone to go ahead and reduce the flow rate down to 30%. It keeps the sump circulating, but just reduces the flow rate down so the fish can eat. And once again, that thing has pretty much been maintenance free. But other than that, I'm pretty much feeding the same food, which is the New Life Spectrum Thera A. I alternate between the small pellet and the big pellet. Um, I also have some frozen brine shrimp and seaweed I feed them. I like to feed the fish a variety of food and they're taking to it really well. Obviously they've grown quite a bit in the past almost five years I've owned them. I think I've actually owned some of them for like six years at this point, like that sailfin tank, but the tank has just been doing really good. There actually is one piece of equipment that I completely forgot about until now and once again is one of my favorite pieces of equipment I have on this tank and that's my UV sterilizer. It's an aqua UV 25 watt UV sterilizer and I credit that to honestly how successful this tank has been. I've never had any algae issues too crazy. I've dealt with ick in the past and the UV sterilizer I believe played a huge part in getting rid of it. And honestly, I think a UV sterilizer in a tank this big is just so beneficial. The pros always will outweigh the cons. And I'm so happy that I built this system to include a UV sterilizer. And I don't think I would run a big saltwater tank like this without one again. But that is going to be a wrap for my 120 gallon aquarium walkthrough for 2023. This was the big update that I think some of you guys have been waiting for and I'm super happy I was able to put it all together finally into one video. If you're wondering how the tank looks four and a half years later, this video is for you. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check out that link down in the description for the product information about all the little bits and bobs that run this tank. I will catch you guys in the next video. Once again, thank you so much for watching and good.